Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're 3D printing awesome stuff made out of liquid. And that means no print lines. And that makes me happier than a wampa at an all-you-can-eat tauntaun buffet. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is working with a tool and material that we've never used before. Resin. In resin 3D printing. 3D printing isn't something we do a whole lot around here. I have a 3D printer, but I don't use it as much as I would like. Mostly, that's because of the sanding. I hate sanding. It's coarse, rough, irritating, and it gets everywhere. <laughs> In all honesty though, sanding is a necessary evil when it comes to working with most 3D prints. The layer lines are gonna require sanding in order to get to that perfect smooth finish that you want for your project. That is, unless you're working with resin. Now this is something we recently discovered by watching James at the Rebel Base build. He's using a resin 3D printer to create a lot of the objects that he's putting into his projects. And I have to tell you, it got the wheels in our brain just spinning. Now let's be honest, you know me, and you know that as soon as I saw that, I went out and got a resin 3D printer exclusively for creating Greeblies. <laughs> Hi Brian, thought I'd join you. I, I heard you was having a bit of a conversation about Greebles. Uh, we were discussing Greeblies. Greebles? Uh, we call them Greeblies. Nernies. Yeah, so why don't you take us through the resin creation? Okay, Brian, well, well thanks for, for giving me the opportunity to come and have a chat with you about uh, 3D printing. So I have a bit of a history with 3D modeling, having been Sith J. Cole uh, back in the day making maps for Jedi Academy, and then moved on to using programs like 3D Max to make custom models. I have uh, been building props and making Star Wars props for my show, The Rebel Base Build. At the moment, I'm working on a inspired build of the Millennium Falcon bench. I've got specific sizes and measurements, so I've been hitting 3D Max to make my own greebles. The beauty of being able to make your own models and your own greebles is, of course, make them fit your builds. And most of these greebles in the Star Wars universe, you can make them from geometric shapes. Lots of cylinders, lots of domes, and there's various tools that are found in all of the 3D software programs. For example, let's look at the jetpack. And you can start with a very basic geometric shape, a cylinder. And on the top of that cylinder, you can use the inset modifier. Once you inset it slightly, you can then use the extrusion modifier, which will increase the height of the next segment. You can repeat this process over and over until you have one long cylinder ever decreasing in size all the way to the top. To make negative space within the cuts, you can use modifiers such as Boolean, which will take away elements of the model you've already made. Using different geometric shapes, adding to and taking away, over time you can build pretty much any shape you require. The advantage of using a 3D resin printer in this case is that you can model things such as tiny little wires and details, knowing quite confidently that they are going to carry over into the final print. So how does a 3D resin printer work? I'm pretty sure Brian calls this something. Is it geekification, Brian? And now it's time for some geekification. Thanks man, geekification. And this is how a, a 3D printer of the resin type tend to work. Recently, I got myself a brand new 3D resin printer, an Elfin 2 Nova 3D. They use a vat in which you pour liquid resin. And this is a photosensitive liquid that solidifies when it's cured by light. So in the same way, a traditional 3D printer the slicing program will slice the model up into hundreds or thousands of different layers. Instead of printing those layers one by one by heat extrusion, these layers are presented to the resin via a LCD screen that's underneath the vat. This cures for a number of seconds until that layer goes solid and then the bed moves up and the process restarts. Eventually, your 3D model lifts out of the vat of resin. I wanted a bit of a no fuss approach to my 3D printing with a resin printer. So I got a hold of some water washable resin, 
which essentially means that once the print has finished, you can take the print bed and rinse it with water to get rid of all the extra resin. It makes for some real no fuss processing once the print is finished. The post processing for the UV prints, other than cleaning down your machine and pouring any unused resin back into your resin tubs, is the UV curing process of the print itself. I popped online and I got myself a small UV lamp and a turntable and placed my print on the bed. As it spins around very slowly, it cures over time. I tend not to give it any more than 10 or 15 minutes. And before I put it on the bed, I make sure that I've absolutely rinsed this perfectly because any resin left on the build at this point, you're in danger of curing and it becoming part of the print. It's a really cool piece of tech that enables us to get such high resolution prints. This is the Greeble from the Millennium Falcon chair. And other than painting and weathering, there's no more prep work to be done. I literally took this off of my print bed as almost a finished product. One of the advantages that I really enjoy about this technology is if I was to put this model on a bed at that angle and print it, it would probably take about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the thickness of the layer. However, if I was to incorporate an additional copy of itself on the bed at the same height, it would take the same amount of time as if I was just printing one. Anyway guys, the main point here is to just have fun. And I've had a blast playing with mine. It's an amazing piece of kit and it's gonna come in really handy as I add more Greek balls to my props and more details to my room. Of course, the only other thing you need to get a successful print is a supportive partner. And if you watch my show, you'll know that my missus loves what I do. She thinks it's a real valuable use of my time. There's some proper DIY jobs for you down here. It's all fun and games until the missus realizes that the honey-do list has been replaced by the greebly-do list. <laughs> Thanks, James. That was awesome. And for those of you that don't know James or you're not familiar with his Rebel Base build and all the cool props he does on his channel, please follow the links below and give him a look. He's built things using electronics and foam, a gonk sorting bin, and our favorite, the DIY Mando bag, which was super cool. So take a second, head on over there and give it a look. I will say that our process here in the Smuggles Room is very much similar to how James has been doing his. Our only difference is that we purchased a Creality resin 3D printer. Now I searched a lot of different 3D printers. I went through all the manufacturer specs and specifically I went through different reviews, both written and that I found on YouTube. And what I found is that a majority of these manufacturers are making these smaller resin 3D printers and they're coming in just below that $300 mark. I will tell you right now, I'm in love with this process and it's given me an excuse to dive back in to Fusion 360. This is a program that allows me to be able to build the parts and pieces that I want from my own imagination. I can make parts that actually fit and work together which is super cool. I can see using this process more in my day-to-day -day workflow. All right, I know that resin 3D printing is not something new, and there's probably a fair amount of you out there that know way more about it than I do. I also know that if you wanna get really large prints on a resin printer, you're gonna to have to spend considerably more money than what I did on mine. The print bed on the Creality, as well as the one on James's 3D printer, is fairly small but that wasn't really the point. The point was I saw another creator, James, doing really interesting things by combining the resin prints with other material. His specifically, he did several things with foam. So this whole thing has brought about my philosophy on tools. And that's kind of what I wanted to share in this episode today. You see, I don't see the 3D printer as printing my whole project. I see it as one tool that creates one element that I can use with a whole slew of other materials. So I can print a piece and use it with foam or fabric. Maybe it's a recess piece underneath some cut acrylic or wood. At the end of the day, the entire goal is to be able to create maybe some smaller elements that I can add to a larger project. And the idea of molding and casting combined with really good resin prints, well, that's a bullseye on a womp rat if I've ever seen one. At any rate, these tools are becoming more robust, easier to use, and the cost barrier to entry is lowering all the time. 
And I think that's gonna give all of us makers just more opportunity to experiment with things that we haven't to build greater and greater projects. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's not about the tool or the material. It's using them combined to build something out of nothing.